Lolly ho everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have a very special video for you. We're going to show you the best light methods in all of Pagos. One of my problems with Pagos is that everyone always does the dragon light method and it is actually the worst method in all of existence in Pagos. So today we're going to show you all of the much better methods that you can do so you can get through your light a lot easier. The first thing I want to go over is how light works. First, enemies give light based on a level proportional to yours. So if I'm level 35, the max level in Pagos, and I kill a level 36 enemy, I'm always going to get gentle light. The light gains are also affected by how many players are in your party, and how many players are hitting that enemy even if they're not in your party. So the more players that you have, the less light gains you get. And I don't mean frequency of light, I mean the physical amount of light you gain when you do gain light. Because light frequency does not change from enemy to enemy, so there's a big benefit in killing more enemies more quickly. But there is a huge turret on having lots of players killing the same enemies. And even a full party of 8 hinders your light quite significantly. Light gains increase with the higher chains, and increase further on chains that are multiples of 5. So if I'm killing enemies that give gentle light from chains 1 to 14, then if I get light on a 15 chain, that light would be increased to bright. It would go back down to gentle for 16 to 19, and go back up to bright again at 20. But after that, chains 21 to 24 would always be bright at base, and 25 would be increased further to brilliant. 26 to 29 would go back down to bright, and then brilliant would be once again obtained at chain 30. Mutations are another beast altogether though. Mutations are guaranteed light, but at the expense of giving less light than a normal enemy would. Mutations are consistent light, and under the right circumstances are going to be a decent chunk of light, and are definitely going to be worth killing frequently. The final rule about light is that frozen void dragons do not follow the same rules as everything else in Pagos. Frozen Void Dragons give a mere feeble light if you solo them. Normal level 40 mobs give much higher light when soloed. These Void Dragons give lower light gains at no extra benefit and are the only enemy in the entire zone that gives significantly lower light gains than anything else around its level and anything else that is above the level of the player. Now, people do like that Void Dragons will mutate under any weather, but the Anubis also mutate under any weather, and you can clear out more Anubis faster than you can clear out more Void Dragons. Since Anubis can be chained with fewer party members more quickly for increased light gains, there's really no benefit to doing the Void Dragons over anything else. They're not more consistent, they give less light than in any other mob, there's just no reason to be killing the Void Frozen Dragons. So we're here to tell you to stop wasting your time with dragons and show you a few other methods that are absolutely going to be not only better than Anubis gains, but they're going to be the best light methods in all of Pagos. Dueling the Void Dragons. Now, this was the big aha moment for me, where I was like, this light is amazing. We were doing these Void Dragons, just Warrior and Black Mage, and we were trying to test like how far can we take this. Um, so at first we're like, okay, we can only pull four at a time. And I think that four at a time is probably pretty decent for people without elemental bonus. But when you have that elemental bonus, even if you only have five Magisite, uh, you can pull eight at a time and sometimes more of these Void Dragons. And these Void Dragons give very good light. Uh, you'll get Gentle at base as a duo, Gentle at base, which means you can go up to Bright and even as far as Brilliant with these mobs. Um, the, void, the Void Dragons are very like condensed in a nice area, they're very nice. Their only downside is that they never mutate, they never mutate, so the consistency of mutations you don't really get from Void Dragons, and their models are actually quite large. So when you're trying to AoE down these 8 mobs at a time, you can very often find that your AoEs are not hitting all of them because the Void Dragons are just so large. Now despite that, the light gains actually were very good even with AoEs missing, but we were like, what if we can do better than this? So even though we found this really amazing light method in dueling Void Dragons, 
um, we decided to go and look for something better and we found it. So the next mobs that we found were the Circas, the earth mobs near the Aetherite Shard. These mobs ended up being the best method in all of Pagos for us. There are three camps, uh, three groups of four, uh, and with elemental bonus you can tank eight of these at once. We realized that they mutate on blizzard weather only, so they're really nice when Cassie is already dead. If uh, you're going for those Cassie kills for the earrings. Um, and what we figured we could do is we would pull a group of eight, then we would move on to a group of four. When the group of four was dead, we would move back on to the group of eight. Now the mutations themselves are a little scary. Um, they're definitely a little scary. They made pulling eight, even with elemental bonus, a little, little bit hectic. So during blizzard weather, I would really recommend you just do groups of four. I think if you don't have a lot of elemental bonus or any at all, you might want to do groups of four anyways with maybe a group of three players, um, depending on how your tank can survive. But this method was amazing, guys. Uh, we were getting light so consistently. These are the mobs that we killed to get every Pagos weapon that we had left. I think I got 11 Pagos weapons with this method. Um, the light was just so strong. We could usually get as fast as nine crystals in under 30 minutes sometimes we would just fly through light and it is a little rng i think there were two weapons where i did get unlucky and i was just really struggling to get light but even when light was really bad i still got eight crystals in an hour um, i think that was my worst was eight crystals in one hour which is still a significantly large amount of crystals. So even with that in mind, I was happy with this method. But there were just times where you're flying through light, you're just getting tons of weapons. I think in two days I got four weapons just casually doing this method. It was amazing. Um, I could not recommend this enough. And we did it with two players, one black mage and one warrior. And when we started this method, we each only had five magicite and we weren't full elemental bonus at all. We both were missing weapons and some gear. Once we went back and got a six magicite, once we went back and got full elemental bonus gear, this method just got even better. Um, tanking the eight mobs through mutations was something we started to be able to do, even if it was still really scary. But you can do this method without all of those things. You can do four mobs at a time, and the speed that you're killing these mobs is not going to be significantly lower than what we were doing with tanking the eight. Either way, I, I think this method is something everyone should be doing. Um, you can only do one group here at a time, but there are alternatives. Those war dragons we mentioned before are the same level. They get the same light gains without mutations. They're just a little bit harder to AoE, and there's also one more alternative, the Storm Mantas. Now I'll mark the Storm Mantas with a blue circle and the Circas with a yellow circle, but the Storm Mantas are a little bit not as good as the other methods because there's only seven mobs at a time. And because there's only seven Storm Manta spawns, you can't do that four, four, and four that you can with the Void Dragons and with the Circas, but the Storm Mantas mutate on fair weather, so if you want some more consistency, some more mutations, you can move over to those Storm Mantas and you'll get the same light gains that you were getting with the Sirikas. Alright, so I need to go over some tips and tricks. First, you need to have the Elemental Fairy XP buff. The healing benefit for the tank is vital and the XP buff helps you gain more light per game. You're also going to need to pick up the Harmony Potion for the increased Eureka XP. That is pretty cheap on the market board, so you should have plenty of those. Be very careful at nighttime. The undead mobs will aggro to blood, so you have to be very careful with where you're positioning, uh, how low your HP is, and not to run through them. Also, the Black Mage do not AoE onto the undead if they are not aggroed. A similar thing with the sprites in Thunder Weather. If there's sprites, just have any casters. Make sure you can position yourself in a place that is not going to aggro them. There are several places. Um, I'm confident you can find those. For Warrior, you really need to focus on self-healing. Try not to use Overpower very much, only if you really need aggro. But focus on your cooldowns, when to use them, and keep up with your self-healing. 
For a black mage, make sure that you're killing off low HP targets when your chain is getting low. The warrior should be gathering up more enemies before you're done killing everything so that you can keep that chain alive. It's very important. And I'd just like to reiterate once again that this is doable with different jobs. We just used Warrior and Black Mage. Um, you'll have to test what other jobs can do. And remember that some jobs can do the 8 pull and some can't. So there's nothing wrong with just doing groups of 4 at a time. We flew by all these weapons. Like, I still can't believe that we even finished every single Pagos weapon. But we did. And, it's, and we were doing this casually. Like, we could have done this in a week if we went really hardcore about it. But we didn't really want to do that. So <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Um, I think what it took us about three weeks or something like that to finish every weapon, so just doing it every so often. But yeah, those are my tips and my tricks, and I can absolutely say this is the best light method in all of Pagos. I think that while doing this, every time we went to that dragon spot to drop off crystals, I just felt so bad for those players because their light gains were garbage absolute garbage compared to this and like in the time it was taking them to do one weapon i was getting three weapons or more i was like okay this is pretty pretty nice by comparison that's pretty much all i have for you guys if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more stuff like this i'm happy to make more videos and stuff like that so please subscribe to the channel share the video if you have friends struggling through pagos light right now and I wish you guys the best of luck working on your Pagos weapons. I really hope that more and more of you start to venture out away from those dragons and into these better light methods. Please let me know what you think. And remember, be the best Eurekan explorer that you can be.